Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in today's video we are going to talk about the leading cause in death in people living in developed countries. As you can probably imagine, this is myocardial infarction. First of all, what exactly is that? Myocardial infarction is the undersupply of a localized area by the coronary arteries leading to regional necrosis of myocardial tissue. There is a variety of causes which can impair the blood supply of the heart muscle tissue. The most common is the partial or complete occlusion of the coronary arteries due to atherosclerosis. Other causes include Prince metal angina, a spontaneous vasospasm, narrowing the lumen of the coronary arteries, emboli, or also allergic reactions. Risk factors for the development of myocardial infarction are, as mentioned, atherosclerosis, but also smoking, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, and diabetes. Those affect the blood pressure and the development of occlusion of the coronary arteries. For diagnosing myocardial infarction, it is as in every disease, important to talk to the patient and obtain a proper anamnesis. The family history, bad habits and pre-existing diseases can give you valuable information. The ECG is our modality of choice to visualize what might be happening within the heart. Certain changes, depressions and elevations for example, show us that and in which location a myocardial infarction has taken place. Also laboratory results are important. Here we take a closer look at the troponin, CK and B and myoglobin values. In clinical practice we usually differentiate three main criteria of which two have to be fulfilled to diagnose a patient with MI. The first criterion is the clinical appearance. Chest pain is usually the cardinal symptom of MI. The second one are the ECG changes, here more specifically ST elevation or depression and negative T waves. The third and last are the elevated cardiac biomarkers in the laboratory investigation. We can classify myocardial infarction according to a variety of indicators. One of them is which layer or layers of the heart is or are involved. Here it can be a transmural myocardial infarction affecting the entire diameter of the wall. It can also be intramural only affecting parts of the wall and subendocardial, affecting only the tissue under the endocardium. Another way of classification is by the coronary artery that is affected. Here we divide the infarction into anterior MI, anteroceptal MI, anterolateral MI and posterior MI. To check for a posterior MI, we put V4 to V6 of the ECG in the posterior axilla line, scapular line and paraspinally respectively. The anteroceptal MI will present with changes in V1 to V3 and the anterolateral with changes in V1 to V6. Also we can divide MI by the ECG changes. This is probably the most well-known classification of dividing it into STEMI and non-STEMI. The next point I want to talk about are the symptoms. In 20% of patients we talk about a silent infarction because those patients do not experience any symptoms. If a patient experiences symptoms, those are usually angina pectoris, referred pain to arms, neck, back and mandible, 
as well as dyspnea. I also want to briefly talk about the pato mechanism and the changes that happen within the first seven days after the infarction occurs. In the first four to six hours, we can observe microcoagulation necrosis of the cardiomyocytes. Also, we can observe an increase in neutrophil granulocytes, which is a reaction of the immune system to the excessively dying cells. Another sign for MI is the myocytic waving we can see in a histological investigation. After 6 to 24 hours, we can observe an even more steeply increasing number of neutrophil granulocytes and hyperemia of the tissue. After 3 to 7 days, granulation tissue is starting to form, accompanied by the formation of new capillaries and the initial formation of a cicatrix, the scar tissue which will be remaining. Also, we will see infiltration of the area with macrophages. After a myocardial infarction, a series of complications can be observed. Those are subdivided into early and late. Early complications include arrhythmia and left-sided heart failure. If you want to know more about those topics, you can click on the banner above. Late complications include aneurysms of the cardiac wall and mitral insufficiency. The last point of this video is the therapy. Acute therapy consists of pharmacological treatment with heparin and ASS to improve the blood flow and perfusion rate of the heart itself and the periphery. Also revascularization with a stent or bypass is done those are surgical methods to widen the coronary arteries and ensure proper blood flow. To prevent the reoccurrence of MI, statins, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors and anticoagulants are given, each depending on the underlying factor causing the MI. If you want to know more about ACE inhibitors, you can click on the banner above. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if it was we would be very happy if you would subscribe to support our channel. Thank you very much.